<clears throat> Lamentations, chapter 5. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Well, God knows what's going up on him. But where Jeremiah is, doesn't look like there's much hope. Doesn't look like God's watching. Doesn't look like God has his eyes on him. And trials and tribulations in our life, haven't we thought that God wasn't there? Jeremiah is human. Jeremiah can't see God. He's believing on faith, though he's heard the word of God somehow, some way. And the despair and the troubles that are all around him, it doesn't look like God is there. And reading 52 chapters of his book, Jeremiah knows it was all from God. Because of the sin of the people, but just got to the point, you know what? It's real. It's absolutely real. And we need to face this in our lives that what the Bible says and what we preach and what we teach is real. We may have a loved one die and go to hell and it don't seem uh, real to us until that moment the word comes. When we preach to the lost people the wages of sin is death. And it hits us home. Then it becomes real. Then we see, well, where's God? When we do the verses like Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And when sin comes knocking at the door to leave a package, well, where's God? He's there. It's just the Bible is correct. And for a man that wrote an entire book of the Bible that we read and studied, wow, it's happened. Everything that I said, and he's not doubting God, he's just seeing it real like, whoa, this is the consequences of sin. And with the consequences of sin, God is absent. Because God was never in the sin. Yet, Judah and Jerusalem never got all the consequences of sin because there are still Jews left today. So God's mercy and grace is there. Jeremiah is alive. All have sinned. Have God put his full wrath out, Jeremiah would have been dead also. And in trials and tribulations and lamentations that happen, God is dead, but Jeremiah is a human, just like we are. Our inheritance, now he's going to tell you what, what happens. He's going to close, as we see in each of the four chapters that we already studied, he's telling you what has happened to the city. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. There's Gentiles running around. They're speaking an unknown tongue. Jeremiah has to press one for Babylonian. Not many Hebrew speaking people. Our houses to aliens. Just like when Israel came into the land of when they were to drive out the inheritance, the people that were there before, the Hamites that were there before, Israel was to drive them out and take over their possessions. God had the Hamites build and manufacture and plant and develop for his people for a date that they will come into the land. Now, it's been reversed. Now the Gentiles have come in and taken over. We are orphans and fatherless. So how do you explain orphans? God so mean to children. 
How do you how do you explain children who have no fathers? It's not a civil lesson. It's not a, a etiquettes of government. Our mothers are as widows. It's not a, a means of social security. You want to fix America. You want America to get right. Verse 3 tells you why there are orphans. Why there is fatherless. Why there are widows. The wages of sin is death. Death has happened to this city, to this area, region, because of their sins. And many of their sins can be found present in the religions today, including the Baptist Church. There are women who are in a Baptist church today who have no man to rule their their family. Whether they are a widow or the father is just gone. Why? Because of some form of sin. Because we're all sinners. A woman who's 60, 70, 80 years old and her husband's died wages of sin is death. He died because of sin. You want to fill out a death certificate for somebody. The 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 ways or means of death was caused by Romans six twenty three. The complications thereof cancer, being hit by a car, uh a tumor, or the body just wore out. Murder. But the foundation that causes destruction, the foundation that causes death, you need to acknowledge the foundation that causes little children to be orphaned, the, the, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the tsunamis, the, the vast cold winters we're going to get where people are going to freeze to death. Because we don't have the proper price of oil. We've got to look. No. We've got to find a home for. No. The very first thing you need to do is acknowledge your sin. Just like when you're dealing with somebody with their soul to be saved. You got to deal with the sin issue. The only sinless person is now seated at the right hand of God. Everybody else has a condition brought upon them because of sin. It may be of themselves, maybe of, of even their parents or their grandparents. It may be in the thing in the blood, like diabetes or other blood ailment diseases that you know that's rampant. It may be even a sexual sexual transmitted disease caused by a, a, a parent or a grandparent with improper sexual conduct. It could be a birth defect caused by the mother or the father doing something they shouldn't be doing before and during and after the pregnancy. Even Jonathan's son, uh, I don't know if I say Methuselah, that's not the one. Jonathan's son, that when the maid dropped the young boy and he became lame in the feet. How did that happen? Sin. Well, I mean, she dropped the kid. Without the rebellion against God, there would have been no injuries. There, would be, there was no hospitals. There was no medical care. There was no injury. There was no pain. There was no sorrow. There was no suffering until Eve and Adam ate the fruit. Even the disciples had that question to Jesus. Did this man sin or did his, did his parents sin? And Jesus said, neither. You can't blame the parents. It's sin. Well, my dad did something. What? So what? So are you going to do something? 
outside the rapture or the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the fact is that you're going to die one day shows one basic point. You are a sinner. If we can get hospitals, if we can get lawyers, we can get the schools and the justice system and the, the politics of America to come to one conclusion with anybody and everybody in this country. The main condition we have is sin. Then we'll get right. Then there'll be that uh, uh, revival. We have drunken our water for money. Does that sound familiar? How many of you get a water bill? A water and a sewer bill. Here it is. And they're drinking out of wells. This is not piped into the house like we have it today. There's a community well that they would go to with their buckets. You, you read it throughout the whole Bible. Read the story of Rebecca when Abraham's servant, how he found her. She was going to the, to the well. Jesus met a woman going to the well in John chapter 4, I believe it is. They would take their buckets, their pots and pans, usually in even early America, in the time of, uh, um, I can't think of his name now, um, Tom Sawyer, Mark Twain. There would be a, a city well, and all the kids and all the servants would be down there to get the water. My grandparents had city water where, where they, I mean, they had the well water where they lived, and they were forced by the government to come in and have the city water be brought in. Now, here's the well, and here are Babylonian agents saying, you want water? You got to pay for it. Nothing's new today. We, we pay a water bill, and then you go to the grocery store and buy water in a bottle. And this may be a type of, type of jo job that Matthew may have had, too. I know it says Matthew was a tax collector, but when I pay my water bill, i got to pay it to the, the City of Daytona Revenue Tax Division of Water and Sewer. A government takeover, one of the things that shows up is you got to pay for your water. Our wood is sold on to us. Many areas of America, if you want to cut down a tree, you got to get a permit. Even if the tree is dead, you got to go down to your, your, your town hall, city hall agency and purchase. If not, you may have to go to a a uh, home uh, hardware kind of store to go get wood. You may have to pay someone to bring you wood. But under God's blessing, you know what you learn in chapter in verse four, chapter five. You learn that the water and the wood were free under God. And God says, "You don't want it." You're not blessing from me for it. You're not thanking me for it. You've turned it over to your gods. You've turned it over to, to you know, it's taking for granted. Fine. Let's see how much you take it for granted when you got to pay for it. Wasn't the water used to make those little cakes to the Queen of Heaven? Didn't the fathers get the wood for the Queen of Heaven to bake the cakes? All right, fine. You want to make it to the to the Queen of Heaven? Let her pay you. Let her give you money for what you need. By the way, you ain't got no more wheat or flour anymore. It's gone. How's your queen of heaven going to feel now? So you're without parents, and now you've got to pay for what you, what you need. Our next are under persecution. So sin will bring, will bring a hard labor, because what else it says? We labor and have no rest. 
They were at ease under God. I mean, they had to work. They had to do things. God wasn't going to, uh, you know, bring the firewood to them and then strike the fire for them. They had to carry the wood, but they didn't have to pay for it. And they were at ease. Now they're under bondage. Now they're forced to do work. And maybe work that they don't even want to do. And with everyone dead, maybe they have to pick up the slack for all those that are dead. Maybe if you worked in the grapevine. All right, you had all these people alive and healthy and well and, and, and picking grapes. Now, maybe there's only ten of you to do a whole vineyard now. Now it's going to take you all night. But the owner of the property wants it done. And there was no Labor Days. There was no July 4th. There was no three-day weekends. You had to work. You didn't work. You didn't eat. There was no welfare system. This was a time when you owed a debt and you didn't pay it. They put you in prison. Till you paid your debt. And that may be one of the things of verse 3. It may not be debt. Besides the widows, the orphans and fathers may be because the fathers have been carried off. Labor camps. Listen, during World War II, on the out of Hitler and the Nazi party, there were many orphans and fatherless, and it's not because the father died, because the father was traveled off into a consecration camp, which would end up in death. Until they came for the rest of the family, if they didn't get them. No rest. They're back to Exodus. They've gone all the way back into a complete circle where they ended up. You know what? That's happened two or three times in my life. I left God. I destroyed my Christian walk. I won't get involved with it. But you know what? God let me go and God stayed right where, right where I left. And I walked a complete circle right back to where I was. And I'd be made saying, wait a minute, wasn't I here Yes, you were. And that's where God stood while you walked away and you came back with more baggage. That's happened two or three times in my life. Israel's right back to where they were. And God hasn't moved yet. They're not in the land. They're under bondage. There is no rest. And there is God waiting in Egypt for them. This time it's called Babylon. We have given the hand to the Egyptians. Don't see that. And to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Isaiah 10, 5 and verse 20. We haven't turned to God. We're turning to other people again. These nations hate the Jews. And you know what America does? She turns to nations to give us food that hate us. Doesn't everyone just love America? Absolutely not. We're building up a bill to these nations, Egypt and the Syrians, would be China and other places in this country right now, today. That we are building a bill. And one of these days they're going to come to our city. They're going to come to our country. They're going to come to our leadership. They're going to say, here's the bill. Pay up. We ain't got no money. You're ours. Pressing one won't be for English anymore. It'll be for whatever language that this country. And listen, you try to pull the crap with the country that comes over and takes us over. That you pull today. Oh, you must speak Spanish. You must learn this. You must give this job to me. You must do this for me. You must take care of me. With all these other nations? I don't think so. I don't think so. They have turned to others besides God. They're not reaching out to God. Egyptians and the Assyrians have what Israel doesn't have, and they're not God's people. What don't they have? 
that these people have wheat, flour, food. Couldn't God give them manna? Couldn't God give them something? Couldn't God take care of them? Couldn't God make a table in the, in the destructed land of sin? Couldn't they just get right? They're not going to get right. Will America have a revival? Not according to Lamentation. Maybe a little revival here and there, but not no national revival. That's not the 70 years. Seventy years after this destruction, seventy years after lamentation, our fathers have sinned and are not. Not what? Isn't that what they said about Joseph? We have a brother and he's not. Not what? Come on, boys, tell him what? Not what? They don't even know where their fathers are. Are they dead? Are they in Babylon? Have they run off to the Edomites? Where's daddy? I don't know. Last time I saw him, he was running. Where'd he run to? Don't know. What happened to Joseph? I don't know. We know he's not dead. We just sold him. We don't know where he went. You see how the Bible with Bible will explain what's going on? They had no idea his brothers, 11 brothers, where jo what happened to Joseph after that. They know that they sold him. What happened to the fathers here? We have no idea. So what does the Bible use? And are not. That's exactly what they used Joseph for. The words of Joseph. When they spoke before Joseph, we have one brother and he's not. Not what? Remember, we, remember way back then when we did that? You can go back and find the video in the audio, maybe, somewhere. I kept asking, and not what, guys? What well, not what, guys? Come on, what's wrong? Confess your sin. Oh, our father's sin. Okay, that's good. Your father's sin. It's your father's fault. What about you? It's not good to confess someone else's sin. The guy in church, you know, his family, look what he does. Oh, look what the pastor does. Oh, look what they do. What about you? You confessing your faults? And we have borne their iniquities. Really? Maybe. But. Uh, I forget what it was. But the, the, the fathers brought the wood. The children made the cakes, something, the, the women, there was, the whole family is involved making the cakes to the queen, to the queen of Sheba, I was going to say, the queen of heaven. The whole family is involved when we read that. You're absolutely telling me that you're completely sinless, that nothing has happened is your fault. That's the American uh, today. That's the great thing that psychiatry will teach you. Blame someone else. It's their fault. It's because you were brought up in this place. It is because you were lacking this. It's because your mama spanked you. It's because, you know, you your your great, 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 great grandparents were slaves. It's because of this. It's because of that. It's never because of you. You didn't learn nothing. This is the condition of a city after they have sinned, after God has judged it, after God has sent prophets, after the warning of God, and the axe fell. And the people are complaining to Jeremiah. Probably blaming him. Servants have rule over us. Well, in the Proverbs, that, that, that was an awkward proverb. The servants, you know, a ruler over the prince, and the servant rides the, the horse over. The servants have more control. And the servants were other people besides, most of them were besides Jewish people.
There is none that does deliver us out of their hand. Wasn't there a chapter that we read in Jeremiah that God told him, let the servants go? Okay, yeah, we'll let them go. And then within a short period of time, they brought them back and put them back under bondage. Well, guess what? God let them go. Now you're in bondage to them. You don't like it, do you? Can you imagine this country is taken over by, by another nation? Can you imagine what our CEOs and chambers of the boards and all the top people that wear business suits and have spoiled all their employees to get a big buck? Can you imagine what they're going to be like when, when a foreign country comes over and takes over? Are they going to like it? People have never worked a day in their life who've got it by inheritance, by stocks and other people's means are going to have to turn to work. What do you mean return? They haven't even started. It's a complete, utter failure of a country, of a city, to go against God and what God has said then turn into waste. People are earning a living, but they have no money in their pockets. Sound familiar? We get our bread with the pearl of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. That's a second advent. That is a, a great tribulation passage living up to the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ when the uh, Antichrist is chasing these Jews down the cell of preacher. They've got to go out in the wilderness to get their bread and there's something there going to kill them called the shadow of death. I don't know what it is. But this verse, this chapter jumps to the great tribulation period. So guess what we've been reading so far? We are reading what's going to happen to the Jew during the Great Tribulation period. You know what's going to have to happen? Their water? Somebody is going to have to give them something to drink. Do you remember something like that in the Bible, Jesus speaking? If someone gives a cup of water in a prophet's name, he shall receive a prophet's or disciples reward did you remember that do you remember uh, orphans fathers and widows when you visited my people when they were sick do you remember hearing something like that by Jesus we are in the great tribulation period right now in chapter 5 they are in bondage under the Antichrist Wow, we took a big jump, didn't we? I wonder if Jeremiah even knows what he's writing. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. And Ethiopian changes... According to the Bible, I don't know, I've never... With famine, your skin turns black. Famine. But we get our bread with pearl of our lives. There are some who are not going to get the bread. And they're not going to die yet. They're going to die of starvation. You can't buy or sell unless you have the mark. Unless somebody else helps you. They ravished the women in Zion. And the maids in the cities of Judah. And I don't really need to eat. You understand that verse. Raping, murdering, torturing women.
princes are hanged up by their hand. That must hurt. They're not hanged by their necks or dead. They're hanging by their hand. You, does the Holy Spirit know what plural is? Have you seen plural words in the Bible? Look at chapter 4, verse 2. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as the earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Now go back to verse number 12 where we read the, hang, the princes are hanged up by their hand. They could be raising holy hands to God, but their hand is raised. And they're being hanged by the hand. The faces of the elders were not honored. Well, they're ravishing the women. They're raping and mutilating and whatever abusive things they can do to the women. Why treat the elders any different? You know, guy walking down the street with a cane, just popped the cane out, out from his hands, watch him fall around, then break his cane and put it right there in his hands again. How about that one? How about in wheelchairs, take him top of a hill before a cliff and just let him roll? All kinds of cruelty you can do. There's no respect. If you read in uh, Proverbs 29 or 30, I believe it is, it says there is a generation. There is a generation coming the Great Tribulation that there is no respect for nobody because it's under Satan. Satan has no respect. Ready? They took the young men. See, anybody. There's no race, creed, sex, or religion unless you're under the Antichrist. And Antichrist, he doesn't even take care of you. you got to receive that mark. They took the young men to grind. Where do you find that in the Bible? Judges 16.21, that's what happened to Samson. Here, young Jewish boy, remove that cow. Remove that donkey. Put this Hebrew boy there and let him grind the food. And make it more funny. Take that wheat that he's grinding and give it to the beast. Let him feed the animals. That's what's going on. Come on, Hebrew boy. Make that food for the animals. You mighty powerful Jew. Come on. Soldier of fortune. Yay. You green beret young man. Do it. And the children fell under the wood. What was going on? They were making cakes. Would you grind? Flour. For what? To bake cakes to the queen of heaven. They took the young men to grind. To make the grain. And the children fell under the wood for the fire. And they ravished the women in Zion. The maids of the cities of Judah. They were making all cakes. Come on, Miss Queen of Heaven, take care of your people. Because since we left off burning cakes to the Queen of, of Heaven, keep wanting to say Shiva, the Queen of Heaven, we have left off, we have been won. You're wanting now. You're wanting your husband back. You're wanting your children back. You're wanting some money in your pocket. You sure have a lot of wants. And God is absent. I don't think we've read his name. Oh, remember, oh, Lord. Okay, yeah, there he is. You see that Assyrian? That's a type of the Antichrist in the Bible. Egypt is not too far behind. That's the world. They've run to the Assyrian and to the world, to the Antichrist and to the Egyptians for help. That's really... Wait till he pulls back that veil and you find him sit. The abomination of desolation, Jesus, when you see him standing where he ought not. 
the elders have seats from the gate. That's the place where they stood. That's where the judgment, that's where the business is. That's where you were supposed to enter and make sure you were approved to come in the city. And the reason why are you coming out of the city? Remember Jeremiah? He's coming out of the city. Oh, you're trading off to the... No, you're trading off to the city. The woman in Song of Solomon, I went to the gate and they beat me. Boaz goes to the gate with the elders and gets some witnesses saying, I have this young woman here named Ruth. And before you, I want to know if you want to take her. If not, let's sign the documents right now that she can be my wife. Before the elders, it's all gone. City Hall has been closed. The judge's bench has been closed. The young men from their music. See, even young men in, in the Bible times had their music. Now it's turned off. The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. What can you say? America's never lived what we're reading. She's in for quite a shock if she keeps on going the way she's going against God. The crown has fallen from our head. Where is the king? He's gone. There is no more king to Jesus Christ. There will be no more king in Israel to Jesus Christ shows up. King of kings and Lord of lords. It's gone. Woe unto us that we have sinned. Well, after all this, now they acknowledge their sin. You know what they're going to do when they see Jesus Christ again? They're going to acknowledge their sin. And not as corporate people, as a corporate nation, that's when they're going to announce their sin. Now, individual Jew can be saved today. But as a corporate, it won't be until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back will they acknowledge that they sinned. But it'll take the Antichrist, Satan, to make them realize. For this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. The body's growing old. The body's growing weak. The body can't do what it can do anymore. Because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Now we read in the Bible that foxes destroy, uh, I think, with a rape. Not too many foxes could run around with a bunch of men with arrows and staves and swords. Foxes are an enemy to a, to a vineyard. So they made sure there was fox control. Not anymore. Foxes are having a party. Woo! The humans are gone. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever the eternal, almighty God. Thy throne from generation to generation. Now they're acknowledging God. Go tell that fox. You remember Jesus saying that? Words that end with X. Dr. Ruckman would say. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever. And forsake us so long time. He hasn't. It is your condition. It is your fault where you are. Had you repented under Jeremiah and all the prophets, you would not be where you are today. Turn thou us unto thee. Uh, repentance is really your heart turning to God. They want God to turn them. Hasn't God done enough for them to turn? O oh Lord, we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. Yeah, you're back in old. You're back in uh, Exodus time again. It's going to be a long walk through that wilderness. That wilderness was 40 years. They're not coming back to 70 years. That seven year tribulation period, three and a half, the last three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. You know what Jesus said about that time? 
Except the, the days be shortened, no man shall survive it. I'm not quoting, I'm quoting verbatim. I'm not quoting verbatim. But he said, for the elect's sake, the time will be shortened. That seven, that last three and a half years, that seven year period, oh, it's going to be just hardship and trouble. It's going to be more than seventy years in, in comparison to a watch. It may be seven years, it may be three and a half years, but it's going to seem like eternity. And God has to speed the clock up just so people will survive through it called the Jews. Satan is given full realm. No holes barred. Well, actually, the only hole he's got... It's those Jews being protected, but still, he's going after them. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. And what a way to end the lamentation. You end, God, you're angry with us. You know how the tribulation period ends? God, you're angry with us. But we get right. And Jesus Christ comes back angry at the nations. 